Okay, hello, welcome back. So in the last video, I kind of implied or hinted in my tone that we are closed, the, the chapter is closed, but I decided to include one more video before really closing this, um, this chapter and before moving on. So I wanted to talk a little about the, the idea of, or the principle of impulsive momentum and the idea and extend the idea to generalize uh, impulse and momentum. So to begin, let's, um, as usual, consider a system of N particles. And a total force F, which is the sum of forces K, where K is one to N, it, that force is the total force. And for this time, let's take FK to be internal plus external forces. So the internal ones are really going to cancel out here. So it shouldn't matter, but for the future discussion, it, it, is, it, it is important. So in the in previous sections before, we saw that if we write the momentum of the whole system as the sum of this mk, v or not v dot v, um, VK, K equals one to N. If this is the momentum, which we could also write M as a total mass, velocity of center of mass. If we have this, then P dot equals this force, the, the total external force acting on the system. What I can do is take integral of this, this, this equation. What I have, well, let me write it down, integral of P dot dt equals integral F dt. And what I can do is write P2 minus P1, the, the momentum between two uh, separate times is integral of f from some t1 to t2 dt. And this is what we call the principle of linear impulse and momentum. So this thing, the integral of force over time is a quantity called impulse. And this whole equation is called principle of impulse and momentum. And it is often very useful uh, principle because if, if impulse, Remember, impulse is also a vector. Impulse, both impulse and momentum are vectors. Impulse is zero along some axis. This means the momentum along that axis is conserve. I always forget. Let's put this if linear momentum, linear moment, linear impulse is zero, then linear momentum, and this is the principle of linear impulse and momentum, and this is called linear impulse. So everything we said are about linear motion. Now going to translational domain, we can do more or less the same thing. So we have this H, the angular momentum, its rate of change equals the external um, moments acting on the system. And for this equation to hold, 
the reference for reference point, the point that we are writing these equations about, should be either either a fixed point point or should be center of mass. If it's a an arbitrary point, remember we, we need to include an additional term. But for simplicity, let's uh, focus only on these. Equations again, what I can take integral of this. So integral dt. Uh, what I have is h2 minus h1, the change in linear, I'm um, sorry, angular momentum is called, is equal to integral of m dt. This is called angular impulse and the whole equation is called principle of angular impulse and momentum. And again, exactly like this one, if external moment is zero about some axis, some axis, then angular external, no, not moment. Well, yes, let's, let, let's keep it moment. And let's call this if force, if external force. Internal force. Mm, yeah, is it is zero sum axis then angular momentum about there is a u here about that axis is conserved. I hope you can read my handwriting. So, okay, th these are the principles of impulse and momentum in three-dimensional space for a system of particle. And as expected, now let's generalize these, uh, these momentum and impulse and the principle of impulse and momentum to the domain of generalized coordinates. So again, we are talking about the same system of n particles. Um, but now let me be more specific. This Fk, force acting on each particle, is sum of all external plus internal forces. Um, we have to consider these internal forces because for the rest of the arguments, it becomes important. So velocity, to, to write the linear or the momentum, velocity of a particle, particle k, is drk over dt, full differential, which I can write it as sum of partial differentials, partial rk, partial q, uh, what index am I using? j, qj, um, q dot j, and j equals one to n, and possibly we might have explicit velocity, so partial rk, partial time. And remember this, um, this is called the gamma or the um, velocity coefficient, gamma kj. So I can write it more compactly as sum of j equals one to n gamma selector, gamma kj q dot j plus partial rk partial t. 
or actually this one, although we don't need it, this one also was called gamma kt. So let's write it this way, gamma kt. Um, all right, so for each particle, for particle K, what I can do is write the um, impulse equation. So M K, its mass times change in its velocity equals the impulse acting on it. So F K dt from some T1 to T2. Um, so what I can do, and let me rewrite this, delta um, mk delta vk equals integral of fk dt from T1 to T2. No, this has to be a little here. What I can do is, these are vectors, so I can dot product by gamma ki for some index i. And this one is going to be dot product by gamma ki. And then I'm going to take the summation over all particles. So k equals one to n, k equals one to n. And because all of these are linear operators, I can change the order. What I'm going to write is integral t1 to t2 of sum of k equal one to n, fk vector, fk dot Gamma Ki, uh, this whole thing dt. And remember, this was our generalized force Ki, or sorry, Qi. So I have integral of T1 to T2 Qi dt. Ooh. Sometimes this happens. I don't know why you shouldn't. Anyway. So this side is now our generalized impulse. Generalized impulse. And let's go back and focus on that side. Mm. So there is something a little unhappy about this equation. So let me write it down again. Sum of k equals one to n, mk delta vk dot gamma ki. My laptop is struggling. Equals integral qi dt. t equals one. t equals, no, not t equals one, t one and t two. t one, t two, okay. So the issue is that as time passes, so we are talking about the integral over time. So time is actually passing and possibly your system is changing. And if you remember this um, velocity coefficients, they actually depend on time. So they are, well, not depend on time. They are dependent on the, the configuration of the system 
actual values of the general x coordinate. So as your system moves, these also change. So we have a little bit of um, difficulty in Let me see, let me see what I have. What do we have here? Oh, right, okay, now I get it. Yes, so these are these are changing with time, and converting the so ideally we, or ultimately we want to convert these velocities in, in our three dimensional coordinates to velocities in our generalized coordinates so q dots, and that's what we we are going to do. So v k. Oh. Why is it so slow? So VK, mm, I can write it. I had it up there as the summation. What is happening? Gamma. Mm. KJ My laptop is almost getting unresponsive. But I don't know what's up. K KJ Not good. KJ Q dot uh, yeah, this is, this is not good. Let me stop this. Um, stop and show here. Keep these. Do this again. So this Q dot J. Plus gamma KT. When this J is from one to N. So if there is some, if we pretend this is to end, why did I need to write? So if, if we pretend the, the gamma K, KJs are constant, so a, a small, the, the time difference between these, um, when we are taking this integral, if that time duration is small enough, your system actually doesn't have a lot of time to move so these, if delta t is small, small enough, gamma, all these gammas, k, kj and kt, almost are constant. So from here, I can take the difference between two time po points, so delta vk, is going to be sum of gamma kj. Oh, my laptop is responding better now. I don't know why. j equals one to n, delta qj. And because the other term is constant, we can, we can ignore, well, 
it's going to cancel out. And remember, this is only valid if this um, gamma kj can be assumed constant. So now I have this equation, I can plug it back in, in my top form. So sum of k equals one to big N mk. Now I have this sum of j equals one to a small n gamma kj delta q dot all of it dot ki. Now before writing the rest, I can rearrange these terms. So let me do that. I have sum j equals one to n. Um, what is the best way? Sum k equals one to n. Mk gamma kj or ki dot gamma kj. All of it times q dot j. And remember, this is the definition of mij. So what I have is sum over all j equal one to n mij delta q dot j equals integral of qi dt from t1 to t2. And this is what we call the principle of generalized um, impulse and momentum. And it, it, it has within it both effects of, or both um, um, linear momentum and angular momentum, depending on what um, what is the dimension of the general coordinate you have chosen. So this is principle of generalized impulse and momentum. So one, a couple of notes that this is valid, valid only if delta t is small enough, small enough, such that you can ignore the internal motion of the system in that short period of time. And from there you can calculate from the, the generalized impulses, how much your generalized velocities have changed. And another one is that, remember, we have to include both um, external and internal forces in our calculations for this to be valid. But if, if, um, if essentially we have an open kinematic chain, so if all Qs are independent, in the pen, in, in, how do I write this? Independent, or in other words, we don't have any additional constraint between our generalized coordinates, so we don't have like a, um, like a closed kinematic chain, like a four-bar mechanism. In this case, we can consider external forces only. So we can ignore the, the internal forces or the reaction forces within particles. So, okay, that's, now that's all for, for this, chapter, we have covered a lot in um, defining generalized uh, movement, generalized energy, momentum, and relationship between them. 
And now in the next chapter, we will start using them to analyze um, complex systems. So, all right, until then.